Hello, this is Philip Myers of PEMI Consulting. Welcome to Strength of Materials for the Tank and Plant Engineer. This is Part 7, an introduction to Morris Circle. Since Morris Circle is a circle, we need to review the basic equation for a circle. x naught and y naught are the center of the circle. The radius is shown here, and the algebraic equation for the circle is x minus x0 or x naught squared plus y minus y naught squared equals to r squared. What we'll show here is that the stress transformation equations are a circle. We start with these two stress transformation equations that we derived earlier. But we'll simplify things by taking sigma average equal to sigma x plus sigma y over 2. That's this term here and we will call sigma x prime the normal stress in the rotated axis, just call that sigma x. Similarly for tau x prime y prime, the shear stress in the rotated coordinate system, we'll define that as tau theta. The next thing we'll do is move all of the terms with sines and cosines of theta to the right hand side and pull everything else to the other side. We'll see later that the trigonometric functions completely disappear. Next we'll square these two equations and add them. This term squared, sigma theta minus sigma average, is squared here, plus tau theta squared is the same as tau theta minus zero. We're going to use zero because at the center of the Mohr circle, the shearing stress is centered about zero. It's symmetric, positive, and negative, in other words. So the left-hand side squared is this, and the right-hand side squared is this six-term nightmare. So we see that this term here gets squared here, and then we take twice the product of these two terms according to the binomial theorem, and then we square the last term, tau xy sine 2 theta squared. We do the same thing for this equation on the right-hand side. But we'll use the fact that sine squared of alpha, where alpha is any angle, in this case it's 2 theta, plus cosine squared of alpha is equal to 1. So you will notice here that these two terms are multiplied by sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 times cosine squared 2 theta plus sine squared. 2 theta. That's 1, so that this becomes sigma x minus sigma y over 2 squared. The plus and the minus for these two terms, which are identical, completely cancel out these middle terms. And then for the last two terms, we have sigma xy sine squared of 2 theta plus tau xy cosine squared of 2 theta and using this formula this becomes tau xy squared. The whole thing simplifies. This left hand side goes here and the right hand side after deleting the middle terms and simplifying these other terms becomes this formula here. So this is the formula of a circle. It's a circle that's centered at sigma average and zero, and that's why we chose zero at this point. And its radius is the right hand side, the radius squared. Last time we showed the validity of this equation. Now we want to get it into this form, and we have this part in the form of a circle, but we need to get the right hand side into a circle. This number is squared, so it's got to be a positive number as well as this number. So we can take the square root of these two terms and square it, and we have the same number, and that's just what is done here, the square root of that sum squared. That puts it in this form. So we have the center at sigma x plus sigma y over 2, 0, and that means the Morris circle is not anywhere. It's not up here or down here. It has to be on this x-axis, and that is meaning that the shear stress, the maximum positive and the maximum negative shear stresses are equal in magnitude to one another. 
the radius as we showed just a second ago is the quantity on the right hand side here so what we have for the Morse circle is the center is at sigma average and zero we have the radius the circle is located on the x-axis and our axes are now sigma x prime. The normal stress is in the rotated coordinate system. We've called that sigma theta previously. And the shearing stress is in the coordinate system. And we've called that tau theta. At this point we're ready to summarize a few key findings that we've discovered about the Morse circle. Any angle in the material, that is rotation of the stress element, corresponds to 2 theta on the Morse circle. So for example, sigma P1 and sigma P2, the maximum and minimum principal stresses, if they were lined up here, the maximum would be here and the minimum would be here, sigma Y, 90 degrees apart because it's doubled in the Morse circle since we're dealing with 2 theta. The center of the Morse circle is the average of the normal stresses, sigma X and sigma Y divided by 2 and it occurs on the normal stress axis at tau equals zero. Every diameter represents a different stress state or rotation angle for two theta. The maximum principal stress lies on the horizontal axis as does the minimum principal stress. The principal stresses are on orthogonal planes. We've said that before that principal stresses, if this is oriented to the principal stresses, this is the maximum principal stress and this would be the minimum principal stress. The maximum shear stresses occur on a vertical line through the center. The magnitude of the maximum positive and negative are the same. Recall that there are three independent stresses in the plane stress model. Sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy. We take these stresses and show you how to plot them on the Morse circle. The first thing to note is that we plot positive shear stress downward, unlike the convention of the xy axis. What this does is allow, aligns the counterclockwise positive rotation for shear stress with the positive clockwise rotation of the stress element. So they are both doing the same thing. The only difference is that this is moving at a rate of 2 theta in the angle as you rotate the stress element. Next we plot sigma x and tau xy on the axis. So here is sigma x and tau xy is this value we plot point 2. And of course then we can plot sigma y as point 3 negative tau xy. That will create a diameter and the middle of the diameter which intersects the sigma axis is sigma average. The two principal stresses are given by sigma average plus the radius. So here's sigma P1, the maximum principal stress. And if we subtract the radius from sigma average, we have sigma P2, the minimum principal stress. Now notice that these are 180 degrees apart. That means on the stress element, they're orthogonal. Now in order to be proficient and have the Morse circle work for you easily. You don't need to remember this formula. You can easily derive it from the Pythagorean theorem. So we'll do that now. This distance, sigma x minus sigma y over 2, so here's sigma x minus sigma y. We divide it by 2, we have this distance. That's one leg of a 90 degree right triangle. The other leg is tau xy, so we just square those and that will result in the square of the radius. So this formula doesn't need to be memorized. If you think about it, there are three possible cases for the plane stress element. In the uniaxial case, when we have a rod in pure tension on the orthogonal plane, in other words, in the y-axis, uh, there would be no stress, no tension. And so this principal stress would be zero. This would be the tensile stress on this side. Now, we don't need to have a 
uniaxial state, we can have a biaxial state. If we have tension acting in two orthogonal directions, we have the maximum normal stress here, but we also have a positive minimum normal stress here. You can change the situation to where there's a positive tensile force or stress in one direction and a compressive stress orthogonal to that, and you can have a more circle where the normal stress in one direction is negative, as shown here. So to summarize, to construct the more circle, we have to know the stress state for a point, and that results in the three independent stresses. We draw the axis for sigma positive to the right, and for tau positive down. One of the points corresponds to the A face shown here, and the other point orthogonal to it to the B face here. So sigma x here, sigma y here. This stress element is not necessarily lined up with the principal planes. And that's why we like to rotate the uh, Mohr circle to find those maximum principal stresses. We locate the center and plot sigma average zero. We determine the radius as we discussed, and then we can plot a point on face B, sigma X and sigma Y. Next time we'll do a few examples by hand and reinforce the ideas we presented here. Thank you and see you next time.